Welcome to Frost Astrophotography and build your own PC for astrophotography processing. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about components to use when building your own PC for astrophotography processing. I'm also going to show you how to put your PC together using the components you have selected. Before getting into actually building the computer, I thought I would talk a little bit about some of the components that I have chosen to be inside my astrophotography processing PC. I wanted this to be a real upgrade, so I decided to get the best processor that I could, and I wanted to stick to the Intel family. The choice fell on the Intel Core i9 processor, 14th uh, generation, uh, 14900KF, and the KF stands for uh, that it is unlocked, uh, which means that you can overclock it to run it faster than its specifications. And the F stands for that there is no graphics inside the processor. You have to have an external uh, graphics card. It is running up to 6 gigahertz and it has a total of 24 cores and uh, 32 threads. Together with that, I'm going to run an Asus uh, Republic of Gamers motherboard Z790F. This was on a discount in the uh, website or web shop that I decided to use and it is uh, on the contrary to what it says on this page it is prepared to take on the 14th generation of processor. Uh, you might need a BIOS upgrade but I didn't need that uh, on my motherboard. This also has everything that you might desire in terms of ports and accessories. I want to have enough memory to make sure that Pix Insight runs smoothly. I decided to go with a 64 gigabyte kit, consists of two 32 gigabyte memory modules from Kingston the Fury Beast that is DDR5 memory at 6000 MTs per second. I'm going to put this in a Fractal Design North medium tower and I chose this because it was fairly good looking and discreet. I'm opting for not to have uh, a lot of lights in my fans and stuff like that. And uh, it seemed like that this case was fairly good uh, to uh, suit my needs, so to speak. 
since this processor is going to run warm uh, when you are maxing the performance anyway I decided to go for the Corsair IQ H150i Elite Liquid CPU Cooler. So this is a closed system with three 120 millimeter fans and it is a liquid already inside this system and you place this uh, cooler on top of your CPU and you can place this uh, radiator in the front or in the top of your tower case. This PC is not going to be used primarily for gaming, although it is nice to have a gaming card in it for special occasions or for to be able to use that extra GPU power in PixInsight for some extra processing speed. I didn't want to go all in on the graphics card since I've spent some money on the other components. I chose a fairly low end but uh, decent graphics card in the uh, dual GeForce RTX 4060 with 8 gigabyte of GDDR6 memory. Now this will fit nicely in this case even with the radiator in the front of the chassis. I'm going to run Windows 11 Pro and this is going to be installed on a one terabyte SSD and I'm going to have a four terabyte of storage drive to be used for storage and astrophotography processing projects. With that said, let's dive into the actual building of this astrophotography processing PC. We are going to go through the components of my astrophotography processing computer build. Starting with the chassis here, it's a Fractal Design North chassis. And this is a mid tower design and it is designed so that you can uh, use a cooler in the front or in the top here. I'm going to use a rather large cooler so I'm probably going to have it in the front. It has some power buttons and USB ports uh, as well as output and input for headphones and speaker. As a base for my build, I'm going to use the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix Z790 Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. So this is not the high-end motherboard, but it is in the middle and it has everything that you might want. Together with that, I'm going to use the Intel Core i9 4900KF and this is the top of the line. It is the worst you can get today. It is the 24 core 3.2 GHz 36 MB cache processor. And this is the unlocked version without a graphics card. So it is the KF, you need a graphics card for this, but that's no problem. I'm going to use a, an external graphics card for this build anyway. I'm going to power this beast with some Kingston Fury DDR5 memories, 64 gigabyte in two modules and it's rocking at 6000 megahertz. Make sure that you have a support for this on your motherboard. As a system drive I'm going to use a solid state PCIe 4.0 NVMe M2 solid state drive. And this is going to house my operating system and uh, the uh, essential applications and software that I need to use. For some extra storage, I'm going to use this four terabyte Barracuda. This is going to be my processing disk for astrophotography. And I'm 
using that for the current projects and then I will have backup on external hard drives to store older data. For graphics, I'm going to use the Asus Dual GeForce RTX 4060 with 8 gigabyte of memory. It's not the uh, absolute best thing you can have for gaming, but this is not a gaming rig. This is an astrophotography rig that is going to used, uh, be used for processing. Uh, I'm not going to use this uh, rig for image acquisition or something like that because that is a separate computer that I already have outside in my observatory. This is going to run very hot with that processor. It's also unlocked so I can overclock it if I want to. And to cool this beast I'm using the IQH 150i RGB Elite from Corsair. It is a water cooler. It is a radiator with three uh, 120 millimeter fans on it spanning 360 millimeter and this is going to keep the processor as cool as possible. And finally to power this monster I'm going to use the Asus Republic of Gamers Strix 1000 Watt Aura Edition Gaming Power Supply Unit and it's 80 plus gold certified with a 10 year warranty. ATX 3.0 compatible and this will have enough power for everything on this table and more if I decide to extend or you know swap out components in this computer in the future. Next step here in this first video is to actually install all of the components inside the chassis. So it's time to fit the CPU in the socket and you line up these four grooves here and this little golden arrow. So the golden arrow goes here and the grooves will make it fit just in one particular place. And you really need to be careful with all of these pins so you don't damage them or anything. And just gently Drop it into place here. Make sure that it is in place. Don't force it in any way. And just turn off on this cover here. And then take this lever. Push it down and lock it into place like this and now the entire assembly is okay. Next step here is to install the uh, memory or DRAMs here. This is a DDR5, 6000 MHz, 64 GB, two 32 GB sticks. You have four places here, A1 and 2, B1 and 2 and the preferred Installation is that you use B, B2 and A2 if you're having two modules with heating fans on them and this will only fit one way because it's a bit shorter here than it is here so you just stick this into place, push it down until it clicks and we do the same with the second module here and now the memory is installed next thing we want to do here is install the main hard drive and this is underneath this heat sink now you have two sizes of M2 hard drives and
can see here that there is a, a smaller hair and a larger one here. So you take the M2 hard drive like this, place it in the socket like so, gently push it in. And you secure it in place with the small latch here. Before putting the heatsink back, look at the underneath and remove the plastic film from the thermal pad. This will be used to make contact with the hard drive to make sure that it's kept as cool as possible. You have different materials for assembling this. So this is for the Intel and AMD or tier 4. We're going to use the Intel. Since we are using the uh, Grizzly, we need to remove the thermal paste that is already on here. Like that, but be careful. Don't remove this if you don't have any other paste like I have here. Let's mount the back plate here now on the motherboard itself. It's not recommended to do this while it is in the case, so it will go something like this. So gently lift the motherboard up place this underneath and then gently try to get this aligned once you have the screw holes aligned here, take the offset pins here for the Intel 1700. And just tighten these by hand, one in each corner. Now we have the four screws in place. Now it's time to address the case here. And we're going to mount the radiator. We're going to remove the fans that are pre-installed in this. see how this can fit into the chassis here carefully. Now we're going to attach these fans in front. I'm going to attach the first one to hold the radiator in place and then I'm going to move this around so you can see. See here we have one of the radiators in place and we're simply going to attach the radiator with the fans here. And 
then simply tighten these four screws until the radiator is completely secured to the chassis. It is time to install the motherboard and be careful with this because you have attachment points here with with a ability to screw it in <clears throat> and you need to watch this CPU cooler when putting the motherboard inside. We can just run it up through the top here and place it here for safekeeping. Be very careful before placing the motherboard inside. You can have this lying down or you can have it standing up like this, just placing the motherboard lining up with the mounting points here and attaching screws to those. So gently pick up the motherboard. Place it in the Gently place it in place here. And it should be lining up with the mounting holes for the screws there. <clears throat> Just place the first one in. Tighten that a little bit. Just enough to put the second one in here. Time to mount the uh, water cooler on top of the CPU here. For that, we need the four thumb screws delivered with this. Since we removed the cooling paste from the head here, we're going to attach cooling paste that we bought extra. Now, this is the thermal grizzly cooling paste. And then you can apply it to the CPU. paste on top. We're going to feed this back down here. This is going to be placed like this on the CPU. So gently align the cooler. Take one of the screws here, finger tighten it, just so you have it in place. Take the next one. Just feel with your fingers until it's tightened enough. And then you use a screwdriver to tighten the last part. So 
So when you feel the pressure here, you can't, don't apply any extra pressure, just when it stops, then you stop screwing these in. And it's important that you have an even distribution of force onto the processor here. You have one USB-C cable that attaches to the cooler here. And everything else will be attached to this for the three fans, for example. You have one, two, and three for the fans. And then we have some power. Uh, we have a USB and we have a signal sensor that we will attach to the CPU fan connector on the motherboard to make sure that the computer knows that it has something attached to cool the uh, computer. Now it's time to open up the power supply. Now, this is something off the chassis, so we are going to screw this to the power supply. Time to connect all of these cables. As you can see here, we have a lot of cables with this power supply. But we are going to start with the motherboard connection that's marked ATX on the motherboard end. It's marked PSU on the power supply end. And you can't really connect these wrong because there's a small twig here. So I'm connecting these two here. Plug in whatever you are going to be using here in terms of peripherals and the PCI Express cards, etc. And then you are good to go. It's time for the uh, graphics card. So this is the RTX 4060 it's not the highest performance card but it is a very good card and uh, primarily we're going to use this for accelerating picks inside So from your power supply, you will run a PCIe power cable and a attach to the graphics board here, like that. Depending on your motherboard, you have some connectors at the bottom here. 
and the left one here is for audio if you have audio connections on your chassis this is where you connect that cable you have a usb connector here for the uh, water cooling and you have some panel connectors here for power switch and power led you have some usb connectors here you have usb uh, 3 two different generations for your chassis connectors if you have usb connections on your chassis like i do for example up here these are connected to the motherboard down there we have the atx power connection and we have the cpu power connection up here both of those run from the power supply on the bottom of the tower and that is basically it you also have some other connection connections <clears throat> And the computer is basically assembled now. What's left is to fix all the connections on the back of this tower and also mount the extra storage hard drive somewhere in this chassis and connect that to power as well. And then we're going to boot this up to see if it starts. That will conclude the building process of this astrophotography processing PC. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to install PixInsight with all of the relevant plugins and processes and extra software, as well as configuring PixInsight to get the most out of your PC and the components. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. If you want to support me and the production of these videos there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.